Hello and good evening everyone, I'm Aditi Lamba. Welcome to Vision of Asia daily South Asian news segment. Hope you all are going well this Wednesday and staying safe and healthy. Thank you for joining us tonight. This is exclusive Vision of Asia edition on ITV Gold's Coronavirus Pandemic 2020. All updates and info and latest news on the ongoing situation across the world impacting United States majorly here, especially in areas such as our headquarters, New York City, New Jersey, and many other cities and states. We continue to present more information and updates and resources on the ongoings of this outbreak, which has quite frankly halted the lives of many Americans with quarantines, curfews, shelter in place, travel restrictions, and much more order by local, state, and federal governments to truly try and control this coronavirus pandemic. The National Guard has been posted across many states in the U.S. with their missions, including response planners, support to medical testing facilities, response liaisons, and support to state emergency operation centers, support to healthcare professionals, logistic support, along with assisting in disinfecting and cleaning of common public spaces, providing transportation, support for healthcare providers, and collecting and delivering samples. Again, we urge all our viewers to stay calm and compose and to follow all the directives of the government and take all necessary precautionary measures. I would like to take this moment and invite all our viewers to send us emails with videos or written statements addressing your personal experience during this pandemic as cases all across the country increase. Email us on events at itvgo.com. We want to hear from our South Asian American community. Also, we send our condolences for all the lives that have been lost due to this coronavirus. We hope for the strength of their families. Let's take a look at the headlines for tonight now. Consul General Sandeep Chakravarti addresses South Asian Americans, COVID-19, Consul General of India, New York. Dr. Dushar Patel advises on COVID-19 updates, prevention and resources, Skype interview, ITV Gold. How will COVID-19 impact our lives? Panel discussion featuring top medical and business leaders, ITV Gold exclusive. Much more on the other side of the break. Stay with us on Vision of Asia. Voice of the community will be right back. And welcome again. I'm Aditi Lama and you're watching the Wednesday night edition of Vision of Asia. Special edition on the coronavirus pandemic that has hit our nation and more than 100 countries across the globe. We are monitoring various aspects of the ongoing situation which is ever evolving currently as new restrictions and updates are coming into national narratives with big pockets of the country on a lockdown making public health safety the biggest priority for the hour. We hope that all our viewers are keeping a strong eye on the ongoing changes taking place in the nation and affecting the everyday lives of Americans. The United States and European nations are stepping up measures to tackle the spread of coronavirus and counteract its economic impact as the numbers of deaths and infections continue to grow. Here is another part of an informative panel discussion featuring top South Asian medical and business leader on the topic, how can the coronavirus impact our lives? Featuring Dr. Hetal Gore, Dr. Pradeep Shah, Ashok Gocha, Dr. Pooja Shah and Dr. Tushar Patel, they covered various do's and don'ts. Let's take a look at the segments. For women who have different needs, like uh, doctor, uh, like pregnant women, uh, like who are more vulnerable, women who are uh, the main central point in the household, everything revolves around you. So, what is advice that you give uh, give to them to uh, stay safe, uh, stay healthy in this uh, situation? So that's a very good question. Pregnancy is what we call as immunocompromised state, right? Your immunity is very low. It goes down. So pregnant women are susceptible to getting a corona, but we don't have enough knowledge about this because very few cases of pregnant women being affected by corona in, in China. But whatever we know, they, they have done really well. They didn't... Um, have high mortality um, as we expected compared to elderlies or somebody with comorbidity. So that's a good news. If you're pregnant and um, just take all the precautions, limit your exposure to groups. Number two, does if the woman gets um, corona, does she pass it to the baby? Right. So far, the cases that were done in China, none of those baby came out infected. So we don't think there's a vertical transmission. But we don't know yet because the, the number of cases are so limited. Um, so that's, but so many cases that had corona, the babies have come out corona negative. So that's a good thing. As far as breastfeeding, right? Um, if the woman has coronavirus, then 
try to limit exposure to the baby. Keep the baby, the safe distance is around six feet, right? So either two meters or six feet should be a distance with whoever is infected to the other person. Same goes to the baby. The baby is usually kept six feet away with a curtain. If the mother wants to breastfeed, we are allowing that, uh, but make sure she wears a mask, washes her hands, clean, and if any bottles or anything, make sure you keep clean. Now I would like to talk about the situation that young people might be facing. Dr. Pooja Shah, are you meeting such people who are from the younger generation, maybe uh, younger than you, mm -hmm. uh, who feel restricted because of this uh, situation? What advice you give them, like whether they should go to the evening parties, whether, I mean, what should they do uh, to stay safe? So I do get a lot of questions about this, whether I should travel or um, go to an event. But because right now there are a lot of main events are being canceled, uh, big music concerts, all these um, different events are going, it's, you just have to listen to what is going around in the public because, you know, they are canceling to avoid mass gathering. And that's the main thing. You're just trying to avoid mass gathering so you can stop the spread of the virus. Sure. So I go, if they need to travel, if it's not essential for work or, you know, try to stay home, try to avoid because you can, the risk of picking up the virus is higher. The news changes very frequently, so it's hard to always keep up. But as much as I keep up, you know, travel if you need to. I know in New York City, uh, my friends told me they're all working from home because New York City says they're trying to avoid a lot of people coming into the city, try to control the virus, and that's all you really can do. And the main thing is if you have to go out, it comes back to hand washing and watching yourself. People who have a respiratory disease, the COPD, emphysema, who has a congestive heart failure, who has a heart problem, those who are shortness of breath, who are smokers, mm. they are all very high risk to uh, death rates will be high on those because they don't have any reserve of the lung and if you get this infection the oxygen is not in the body and that should so they should try to avoid the uh, contact with these people or try to stay away from them as I say that we have already said six feet is the distance is good where the mask now having said that everybody doesn't have to use the mask if you don't have a disease, there is not proven cases that it will prevent you because the, the virus can stay on your eyes, on the face, so the mask is only covered by the face, I mean the mouth yes. and the nose, but it is on the face and everywhere, so you cannot prevent by just using mask. So don't get panic. If you don't have a mask, don't be worried. Just use simple hand washing. Even you can wash your face if you have any problem, you know, sometimes to do so simple soap and water, but try not to be panic. Just be alert and awake and be, but don't be panic in this situation. It doesn't mean, if you have good immune system, you can fight it out, this disease, very well. It also, turmeric has uh, people who use it on a regular basis. They've found reduction in the number of cancer, right? Because it has a cancer-fighting ability. So a lot of things that we use to cook our meal, I think was so thoughtful, right? Using ginger, garlic, haldi, um, all the spices, they create kind of chemical um, in our bodies that will fight the infection. So that's some of the examples. Um, I'm not an expert in Thank that, you. but this I is what I know. So do you think we, the authorities, the administration, the health department is prepared to tackle the situation if it comes, uh, like if it develops more in the communities? So I think according to CDC and the, the government uh, recent data, uh, one million kits has been shipped to the providers and the hospitals and, and the doctor's offices and the labs uh, for, the, uh, for the needy patients who requires the testing. Mm. Uh, the initial response was not that great, so I think uh, delay was definitely there, and I think that creates a lot of panic and anxiety for, for patients and, and common people. So I think now I think it should not be any problem getting the test uh, for those who requires the test. If you think you have um, COVID-19, first of all, you should call your doctor. Don't go out in the public, don't show up at the ER, don't show up at the doctor's office. The reason is if you actually have the disease, you can 
pass it along to other people. Mm -hmm. So what we recommend is the patients can call us and or call the doctors, and then the doctors will tell you what you need to do in order to get testing. Now, there are labs in New Jersey that do have the testing, so all the um, majority of the doctors have ways of getting the patients tested without exposing a lot of people. The important part, the doctors also, I would like to suggest something, really, because, you know, in the waiting room, there are many sick patients, and they don't want to go. The way I do in my office is like this. If a patient calls me that they have suspected, I, if I have to see the patient, because we don't know really what it is. Okay. So what we do is we tell the patient to stay in their car. So it's isolated. That not I see. And when you are ready to see the patient, you take them into the room directly without going into the waiting room because, you know, there are so that many patients who are very sick and that we don't want to expose. So what I do, I take them when I'm ready to see, take directly into the room, give them mask. Also, you, you have a number there for the government. I think before even you do the testing, you need to be screened and make sure that it's a proper way we do the testing because everybody's scared and everybody doesn't mean you have it. What you have it, you need to be screened properly and if it is there, we can do the testing and now it's available, you know. We now have more from our exclusive sit-down interview with Consul General of India, New York, Sandeep Chakravarti from our studio here in Queens, New York City. Member of Indian Foreign Services, Consul General has an extensive experience serving India's mission in Spain, Colombia, Bangladesh and Peru and prior to assuming his charge as one of the most important consulates of the Indian government in New York, he was the ambassador for India to Peru and Bolivia. With all his experience and insights into the ongoing works of Indian government and his interaction with Indian nationals, Consul General Sandeep Chakravarti to readdress all Indian Americans on COVID-19 coronavirus, the current proactive steps of the Indian government, Consul General's appeal to the nation and much more on the issues and concerns of Indian nationals and visa holder post the updates on the travel advisory from India and the US. For all concerned Indian Americans or Indian citizens living in the US, please take all measures and contact the helplines of the Consulate General of India, New York, for any questions and or you can also reach them via their email. Visit www.indiainnewyork.gov.in for more info. Here is Consul General Sandeep Chakravarti. Is there any information right now? India is currently not in the list that is banned um, uh, you know, from the U.S. to come in or to go out. Um, any um, updates on, any changes on that? Is this, is this something that we should be concerned about? I know you said we shouldn't travel if it's not essential. But uh, should those people be concerned that are planning to travel? You see, I cannot forecast uh, the how the situation will evolve. Right. You just see the advisory which was issued today by our minister of Health uh, and Family Welfare, uh, which very categorically says, it has been put on our website as well, uh, that uh, there is compulsory quarantine for a minimum of 14 days for passengers coming from or transiting through UAE, Qatar, Oman and Kuwait. Yes. Now, if an Indian uh, national yes. travels to India on, let's say, uh, airline transiting through UAE, you will be subject to quarantine. Okay. So, that is something one should keep in mind you're going to because many people travel on these Middle Eastern carriers into right. India yeah. so one has to be uh, very careful and that's that will come into effect from 1200 GMT on March 18th at the first port of departure yeah. secondly travel of passengers from European Union member countries Turkey and UK to India has been prohibited mm -hmm. so even if you're an Indian national and you live in the UK yes. you cannot travel to India right now so and these will remain in force till we believe we have been able to you know flatten the curve and, and stop the expansion and, and transmission of the virus so my suggestion to all of you is that avoid uh, non-essential travel in case you feel that you have to travel particularly there have been cases of uh, uh, Indian citizens who were on H1 uh, visa and the right. visas have expired yes uh, and but they have children who were born here minors yes. uh, and uh, they need to go back so in those cases uh, we will be making exceptions uh, but we would our whole ambition is to keep those exceptions to the bare minimum what you know in case of these quarantines that you know you are discussing and since we have you here and I know you said that you've seen some videos of them could you sort of uh, give us an insight into what is happening in these quarantines and as you said if you develop a symptom um, on the plane you are subject to screening and if it comes out you could be quarantined so that is a matter of concern what exactly happens there 
quarantine is basically keeping you in isolation mm-hmm. we have uh, uh, many people in in quarantine and uh, you know the there is the, uh, means i would say that you know uh, uh, there is no harm in being in quarantine as such right. but you will be cut off from your family and and the world for 14 days you know you will not be allowed to move out and interact with anybody it's it's yes. like uh, self isolation you know so uh, that may not be a very pleasurable mm-hmm. uh, uh, situation for many people but uh, you know if you want to subject yourself to that risk uh, uh, you you can travel but again you see uh, we don't know uh, how the travel uh, ban will play out right uh, you know we didn't have this advisory till yesterday yeah. and uh, a few days back president trump also banned all european flights and yeah. i believe now uk and uh, ireland may have been added to that list so you know the whole idea the effort of the entire world government yes. is to prevent uh, the migration of, uh, of the of the virus so that it remains in place and it dies out wherever uh, it is present right and then you know for indian americans that are living here you know the community is very concerned sir and again we are talking about the students that you had reflected upon i am talking about universities such as columbia and you know high ivy league institutions that have either decided to suspend their entire semester or have suspended it for enough weeks some of them have asked the students to vacate their premises the dorms a lot of these graduate students that travel from india are on student visas are only living in their dorms and that is their home to them we saw many videos and posters of people holding posters saying i have nowhere to go um not too many indians but i have seen that with other immigrant communities how has the consulate been handling the situation i would love for you to give us some insight into how the students should be handling it yeah, perhaps help us calm this down this is a this is a, one of the fallouts of of uh, what has happened in the us right. with uh, with with covid-19 because many universities have uh, closed uh, down and have asked students to vacate the dorms and many of the students don't have any place to stay so i would like to request uh, our community and community organizations to step forward mm-hmm. and if if you can Uh, offer uh, you know a temporary housing to to the students uh, uh, it will be of great service to 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 your country and to your fellow countrymen what we have done is that we are coordinating efforts right. uh, many organizations have come forward api has come forward oh, wow. tana has come forward hmm. uh, we know people in in um, in cleveland who have come forward we have uh, the hindu uh, uh, sevak uh, sang hss yes. Yes. they have come forward in fact they have uh, uh, they have uh, issued a uh, a poster with helpline numbers from for for all over the united states we are yeah. working uh, closely with them we also have a education helpline in the consulate education.newyork@mea.gov.in uh, it's it's available on our website uh, yes. if you have any any student has a query and needs help uh, we will be able to connect you to people who can offer you that help but once again you know i would request the community uh, to to step forward Uh, yes. to to uh, offer uh, housing to the mm. students who have no way to go because yes. you know if they, it is not advisable to travel to india right. and many of them have a visa status status where if they go back to india then they will not be able to finish their education yes. or they will be not be able to finish their uh, optional yeah. practical training so yeah. it's a, it's a matter of concern and we are trying to deal with it there is a big effort going on coordinated by our embassy in washington yes. uh, and and we we have been issuing some advisories on this as well and i would request people to uh, connect to us again on students particularly who need help and we will ha- we will try to ha- connect you to community members and this help could be in terms of accommodation in terms of them figuring out what is happening with their visas in terms of them just figuring out where where they should go in the situation again everyone the consulate has a helpline make sure you connect with it make sure you ask your questions so they can help you out you just had mentioned the indian embassy in washington again a huge representation of india for indian americans and internationals here uh, what has your communication been with them like and you know together i know the concern is it shouldn't spread but there are many things that are concerning indian americans businesses that work between india and the us uh, you know people that travel on a frequent basis um, you know many educational venues as well we're talking about schools and students uh, what what is what is the thought process right now in those regards and how are you both communicating you see uh, there is a great deal of coordination which is going on uh, between uh, amongst the embassy and the five consulates uh, we are fully aware of uh, Uh, the the you know the under the leadership of our ambassador we are all uh, communicating and coordinating yes. and we are stepping in to help each other uh, you know uh, there is possibility that one of 
one or more of our consulates may also enter into the lockdown situation there we will chip in and, and support and and particularly the education effort is being coordinated very well uh, from our washington embassy and we are reaching out to our community members and i think it's an entire effort of the, all the consulates and right. uh, and our embassy and and uh, we are uh, Uh, frequently uh, communicating in fact we are over communicating so that you know we follow the same uh, uh, same policies uh, right. uh, in all our, all over the united states yes it's time for the show break stay with us in vision of asia voice of the community will be right back and welcome again you are watching the wednesday night edition of vision of asia coronavirus pandemic focus As the world grapples with coronavirus, we are looking at many strict measures taking place all across the nation with many concerned over the spread of virus COVID-19, the risk of getting it and how to truly utilize social distancing to stay safe and healthy. We continue to present direct advice from South Asian American physicians as well as medical professionals on ITV Gold, bringing forward necessary steps updates and much more greater insight onto the ongoing crisis and the containment of coronavirus pandemic here is leading south asian medical professional dr tushar patel our conversation with him via skype from new jersey reflected upon all the essential information our viewers must know on covid-19 and how to look at the situation logically we thank all medical professionals and healthcare workers that are working round the clock risking their health to help all distressed americans let's take a look at the segment could you just sort of break down the exact situation of coronavirus from when it began to what's happening exactly right now and i know we're talking about it being similar to sars or you know issues of ebola um your take on you know exactly what has happened and perhaps what has been missing so far from uh, finding treatments or preventative measures So as you know we have seen at least two coronavirus outbreaks in in last two decades one in 2003 with SARS uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome and another one in 2012 MERS middle eastern respiratory syndrome luckily covid-19 coronavirus 19 is uh, is not highly infective which has a very low mortality rate the fatality rate is only 2 to 3% compared to SARS which was 10% and MERS which was about 15%. So we are lucky that the spread is 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 huge however the mortality rate the complications is is very low. About 80% of people recovers fully without yeah. any treatment. So that is a very good news uh, for for COVID-19. You know doctor you know I would like to address a question that was sent to us Uh, by one of our viewers how do i ensure that i can stay safe right now i know that the preventative measures aren't a lot but what do you recommend that we totally look out for and also your take on current trials and vaccines and any information you can perhaps provide to us <clears throat> so the first thing the avoid close contacts hmm. group gatherings especially concerts athletic events conferences theater outings public transportations I think those are the the main risk crowded retail stores or malls working out in the gym where are, there are many people right Vis- limit your visit into someone's house mass transit systems use caution when you go to local restaurant I think yes. what I heard today there is a curfew for yes. the restaurants starting tomorrow the restaurants being closed so yes. that's a good thing grocery stores or pick up medicines or play sports in a park Uh, going to church or temple or traveling those are are risky and you, you you need to avoid those and avoid non essential travel i think this is a common sense if you right. don't have to go somewhere uh, it's uh, if it's all possible avoid it as far as the vaccine vaccination goes yes it will it will take anywhere from 9 to 18 months oh, wow. what i heard today there is wow. a phase 1 uh, a uh, trial going on in human beings as of today it may take 6 months it may take 9 months it wow. may take up to 18 months for the for the safe vaccine available for the people in our country so yeah. i think it's a long haul luckily there is no specific treatment for covid-19 it's a virus illness it's like influenza if you become sick you need to isolate you need to quarantine yourself symptomatic treatment if you have fever take tylenol 
If you have right. cough, take some over-the-counter cough medications. Best so you thing basically is, treat it just cough. like any other flu you have on a yearly basis, primarily. Correct, correct. There is no specific treatment. There are some people are getting some experimental drugs right now, but none of the medications for COVID-19 hey, is FD approved. So few patients are getting some treatment in the hospital setting where they are very, very sick. And, and, and the physicians and the doctor community is trying to help them by experimental drugs. And, right. and, and that, that is all we have right now. You know, doctor, if you, if you don't mind discussing with us, could you uh, sort of uh, give us more insights into why coronavirus is so dangerous, uh, the impact of it on the lungs of people that get truly impacted by it? If our audience can get some more perspective into why they have to really watch out for it, could you please give us some details on that? So, <clears throat> Yeah, so the incubation period, when, when you get the virus into yours and developing symptom, it takes up to 14 days. Right. So that is the highest risk. So if somebody is, is healthy right now walking, but carrying the virus in themselves may or may not have the symptoms for next uh, two weeks, up to 14 days. So those are the risks we need to ensure that somebody is walking right now healthy. That doesn't mean he or she is not sick. So I think that is the whole reason we are doing this social isolation or ensuring that the movement of people are restricted so yes. we can stop the, the virus spread right then and there. Your take on uh, how the U.S. administration has handled coronavirus so far and what is still needed uh, from the government uh, to help all of the necessary cases and the increase of number of cases that we keep on hearing about here, especially in so, hot centers such as New York or California or Massachusetts. So uh, I'm, I'm not allowed to speak for the U U.S. Department of Justice. However, mm -hmm. as a community health care provider, I can tell you Despite the announcement of pandemic last week by WHO and more than 6,000 deaths worldwide, wow. my message to the viewers and the community is don't be panic or not to have fear and use common sense approach and do your own part to reduce the spread. Again, we hope that you all stay safe. And this is all for tonight's episode. Remember to send us your suggestions and get your voices and organizations on our show. Email us on events at itvgold.com or follow us on our ITV Gold handle on Facebook. You can also now subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch many of our popular shows for free. Thank you for joining us tonight. This is Vision of Asia and I am Ati Lamba. Take care and be well.